Big Tractor Power is here at the 2018 National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. We're here with Ryan Custard from How Farms Work YouTube. Uh, always a great channel. Enjoy seeing your farm. And uh, so, what brings you to, out to the show this year, Ryan? I am here to do a meet and greet for Rhino Ag. So I'm here to meet fans. Um, I'm expecting it to be a pretty big thing this year because I've had a lot of people asking if I was going to be here. So it should be a pretty good time. So uh, you've got a few Rhino products on your farm. What, what do you use in your operation? We have a Rhino 4155, just recently the Rhino MDB 130, the Rhino RDF 14 wheel rake, and the 70 series Rhino blade. What am I ever forget? That's just about everything. I believe that's just about everything. I might be forgetting some, but that's what I can think of well, off the top of my head. Well, it's really neat to see them on your, your videos on YouTube, uh, especially the large wheel rake, which we can see in the picture behind you. That's a yep. really impressive machine. Yeah, it's got quite the width on it. Probably the biggest rake I've ever used. So, so uh, your channel's been growing a lot, uh, almost up to 130,000 followers on YouTube, which is pretty exciting. And you've got a farm day coming up later this year. Yep, June 23rd. So that'll that'll be at your farm, and yep, people will be able to come in and say hi, see the farm it's in person. And one of the biggest things that people say said at the last farm day was it's a lot closer to the road than we thought. It seems a lot bigger than it is on camera. So. Uh, I think it really serves a good purpose to put it in perspective for some people. Sure. Well, I enjoyed you did a video, um, I think, in the fall where you took your uh, drone up and showed your, your hometown and where the yeah. farm lays and your your different um, farmland and how it is. It's mm -hmm. pretty neat. And that's yeah. a great thing about YouTube is just sharing farming and really appreciate right. what you do to promote agriculture and Thank help you. inform people on how farms work. Yep. That's I try to be... As great of a role model as I can possibly possibly be, because there are a lot of kids coming into agriculture. They say that the average age of the farmer was going up. I don't know if it's going back down at all, but um, I'm trying to promote it to kind of, kind of bring in that younger generation. Well, it's definitely definitely needed because without farmers, we don't get to eat. Of so. course. Well, we appreciate you visiting with us, and uh, I'm hoping to make it out to your farm day myself and um, get to see a little bit of Wisconsin farming while I'm up there. Cool. So, well, have a great show and uh, look yep. forward to seeing um, more Rhino products. Thank you. Thanks. Big Tractor Powers at the 2018 National Farm Machinery Show here in Louisville, Kentucky. We're at the Rhino Ag booth. Ryan from How Farms Work is here today. We just visited with him and now we're talking with um, Barney Vandiwerk, uh, who works for Rhino. We're going to talk about some of the products that uh, Ryan uses on his farm in Wisconsin. Uh, so I guess the first thing we're going to look at is uh, one of your big wheel rakes, which uh, look pretty impressive on the How Farms Work videos. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we've been in the wheel rake business a lot of years. Of course, wheel rakes have been in the U.S. for many, many years. I was in on the ground floor probably 35, 40 years ago when these were introduced to the U.S. market. It started to take a hold. The beauty of a, of a wheel rake is the width, the amount of material you can cover, the speed at which you can rake, and also the way the unit is designed. Uh, there's many different configurations available. We actually offer about three configurations on this. We offer a standard V-type rake that is an 8, 10, or 12 wheel. It's on a, base, uh, not a straight T-frame, and each wheel is mounted independently, so it follows the ground contour very well scoop in the hollows, get your hay out, it stays on the ground when you go over the hills and so forth. Then we have a version of that same rake that you can actually vary the angle of the arm, of the uh, rake arms as well as the width of the windrow sitting in the seat of the tractor. You don't have to get off the tractor and make manual adjustments to it. And then our top of the line rakes, if we go all the way up to 30 feet, 10 inches wide, That's a big rake. the double flame rake that you see here. And that rake will rake out, well, is a, uh, it's what we call a folding rake. It'll fold out to that, that, uh, that angle, or to full angle to give you your 30 feet. Most of the smaller ones, the rake, the tines fold up on top. On these rakes, the entire frame folds out, and that's how you fold them out. The biggest things I like to point out on this, individual wheel flotation. If you notice, every wheel has its own flotation spring. That gives you very good contact with the ground, stays on the ground, gets all your material. These rakes do a fantastic job in light hay. They do a fantastic job in corn stalks. They're virtually will work in any conditions. The one thing I like to point out on a wheel rake when people look at these, if you notice the tine is attached in the center hub of the rake, 
with a bolt and then the tine comes out, comes around, and you notice how flexible it is. Back in the old days, <clears throat> wheel rakes got a bad name because these tines were mounted on a wheel, they were very stiff, anything you came to in the field got kicked into the windrow. The beauty of this is this tine will flex and as you run it on the ground, you want to see that flex back slightly. A lot of people don't adjust it correctly because if you see this really pulling back, you got too much ground pressure. You want to get a little bit of that pressure off, but they should pull back slightly and that will let it pick up the hay. But the beauty of this is when it comes around the back and releases the hay, that time will tend to kick and that gives you like a tedding action. And because of that, this gives you a fluffier windrow than what you'll get out of an old parallel bar rake or something like that. So the, the rake actually, the wheels, the way it works, sweeps the ground very cleanly. And when it discharges the hay, it leaves you a nice fluffy windrow and uh, lets the air get through. Air dries hay, sunshine has nothing to do with it. We like nice dry air moving through windrows to give you a dry, dry material. One of the most comfortable places to hang out at the uh, National Farm Machinery Show is the Rhino Ag booth because uh, they've got their own uh, benches that they make at the factory, uh, which I don't think are for sale to the public, but uh, they're definitely a neat bench in, uh, in design. Everybody asks about it, they, they uh, take a look at it, they say, hey, that's pretty cool, it's actually got a handle on the back and you can roll them around. The uh, helmet wheel assembly are off of a flex wing rotary cutter. And the unique thing about it is, if you notice the tread pattern, um, <clears throat> that tread pattern is actually a rhino hoof print. So if you saw a rhino in, a, in the wild, that's actually what the hoof print looks like. And the, the neat thing about this is, when you go out in the field and you see that tire imprint, you know you had a rhino in your field. That's pretty cool. So, so anyhow, now the reason, the method to the madness on this type of tire is simply a number of years ago, everybody used aircraft tires on mowers to durability. Uh, they didn't go flat and foam fill them and so forth. But the problem is we can't get enough aircraft tires to fulfill the need. So we we're actually putting on new tires on flex wings. So what we did is on the new design of flex wings, we actually came out with this Rhino Tracks, what we call tire, and <coughs> we build these ourselves. We're the only company that handles them. They are foam filled, so you don't have to worry about them going flat. They go up and down the road very well. They don't bounce. They, they're not. They, they, they give you a good ride. The Rhino Tracks design is also self-cleaning, so it does a nice job of cleaning the tire out as well. Uh, last year when they were putting working on the shows, engineering got involved in it and they built some props for the show. They came up with the bench design with the Rhino Tracks tire. Well Barney, uh, watching Ryan on How Farms Work YouTube, uh, we've got to see him mow down a lot of different uh, material with his uh, Rhino mower. Uh, we've seen him go through eight foot tall weeds and grass, uh, mowing a lot of brush on the pasture and out in the field uh, mowing corn stalks uh, for Stover. Uh, so what can you tell us about these mowers? Well, the first thing I'd like to do is make a comment about Ryan, because I catch his YouTube uh, <laughs> channel every once in a while, I'll pick up on one of those, and then we also use some of that video on our own website. But I kind of get a kick out of how, since he's got his Rhino Ag 4155 cutter, all of a sudden the farm looks a little neater, because on his YouTube videos, I've seen him trim out hedgerows, I've seen him knock brush out of pastures, cleaning things up. But a lot of people don't understand about a flex wing rotary cutter. Yet you're going out there, you're cutting down the grass, but really it's a management tool or a forage management tool to feed your cattle. You get out there in the spring, that lush growth comes on, your cattle mow it down, and then it tends to dry out and get tough. You go in there with a rotary cutter, you knock it down, the regrowth comes back, you basically get a second crop out of it. It's like making a second cutting. You also knock all the brush out of your field and make more room for the, the beneficial plants to grow instead of a big multiflora rose plant or something like that. So I've noticed Ryan enjoys using that to clean up fields. Uh, the thing about a rhino, if you go to Rhino Ag on, their, on our website, You'll notice some machines that we're actually, there's one working in Texas that runs six days a week, eight hours a day. And they're actually cutting down trees that are 30 or 40 feet high with it. Wow. The machines will actually go, our, our cutting capacity goes all the way up to five inches. So you can run five inch material. Um, the machine that he has is a 4155. This one is a 4150, which is basically the same unit with a few minor changes. And other than that, they're, they're uh, identical. What I like to talk about on a, on a Rhino 41 or on a Rhino cutter 
Number one is we completely redesigned this unit about five years ago, and if you look at it, you'll notice the nice clean lines on it. Uh, you'll notice some innovative things on it. The polyethylene cover to cover the main mechanization or mechanism on this. Um, this machine was also designed for ease of maintenance and ease of operation. If you want to level this machine, once you hook it up to the tractor, you simply hook it up to the tractor, you drop it down to the ground, you adjust the tie rods from the front to the rear, you tight, take all the slack out of those, adjust the cylinder on each wing, and raise it up and the machine's level. You don't even need a level or anything like that. It basically that's uh, does that's that. very handy. Yes. Uh, clean top on it so it's easy to take your uh, leaf blower, blow the top off, get rid of weed seeds so you're not carrying them field to field. Some of the things they built into it, we like to brag on our big foot skid shoe. Nice big wide shoe, if you turn the corners, got rounded edges, it's not going to gouge into the ground or anything like that. Chain guards are standard. But one thing we did on our unit is give you a longer hitch on it, to give you a little more room to turn and so forth. So you got uh, you run bigger tractors, duels, and so forth. You got a lot of room to do that. It looks like it has a little aerodynamics to it too, and the yeah. arch of the welder. Well, that, that's what we wanted. We wanted a nice design. We wanted a machine to look good and everything else. You look at the shield. <coughs> most cutters on the main cover shield have a big metal cover. You got wing nuts, nuts or bolts, or something like that to get at it and, and get in there and do work on it. Very cumbersome to get to. On ours, you simply pull it up, rides on an air strut, locks up, you can get into your universal joints, you can check your gearboxes, the wing gearboxes, you simply got a dipstick on them, you loosen that dipstick, pull it out, that gives you a level of the oil on it, those are 225 horsepower boxes, so they get heavy boxes, we actually designed that box ourselves. Over here to the side, we've got a cutaway of a little bit. And that, you know, that's very handy because you know everybody wants to do maintenance, but you're in a hurry. If you got to unbolt something, you might not do as much maintenance if otherwise. You, so. If you make it easy, it'll get done. If you that's don't right. make it easy, it won't get done. We also, if you look at this cutter, we think about safety, we think about your safety and everything else. You notice here's a little pan underneath here. What that does is when you cover close this shield you got 360 degrees of protection so that, so that nobody can get anything in the way of the gearbox. And the thing that's unique about this, here's your dipstick where you check your, uh, check your lubricant. And just, you know, open that up or pull it out every day, make sure you got your oil in it. Drop it back in, turn it in, so that's where you check it. We actually call this the EZ gearbox. The EZ stands for the guy that designed it who is our engineer, and that is Eric Zimmerman, who's actually who designed this. The design that we feel is unique about this, we have forged shafts on the gearbox, so the main shaft is forged, the gears are forged, the shaft going out of the bottom of the box is forged. This is actually a three inch diameter shaft. This hub is all mount, mounted right with the shaft, it's all one unit. The seal on the bottom, actually has many corners that anything would have to go around to get into it. So it's very well protected as far as getting string wrapped around it, barbed wire or anything like that. It's a good secure system. It's very durable. It's not something that's gonna, you're going to require a lot of maintenance. The other thing that we're using, a number of years ago, we came out with the Infinity Blade Carrier. This is actually what your blade's attached to. Uh, a lot of people look at that, you know, they're looking at cutters, and they're saying, well, we ought to have a stump jumper on there, and to give you an idea, here's a stump jumper on a machine right over here, it has that little rhino tag on it, big, big round steel plate. That's your stump jumper. Now, stop and think about this. Every time you start your PTO, you have to start all that iron turning. When you shut them off, there's no overrunning clutch. Your PTO brake has to stop it all. The more iron you have there, the more wear and tear on your tractor PTO clutch, on your tractor brakes, the more repairs you're going to have. This is a very simple system. It's very light. It's very durable. When you bring this style unit up to operating speed, this Infinity Carrier virtually becomes a round disc. So if you would hit a stump, you would hit a rock, that will bounce right over and continue on. From a maintenance standpoint, you take six bolts out of this, that will drop right off there. You can also, when the wings are folded up, you can see all your blades, all your bolts, everything. You can see the end of the shaft. You know that nothing's going to happen, or you know that. You can take a look at it and make sure you don't have any issues. 
So we're back here at the back of the mower and we had talked a little earlier about the Rhino Tracks uh, tires and wheels and we can see uh, those back here on the back of the mower. They give a lot of flotation as it works its way uh, through the field. Well, what we've got on here, of course, obviously we talked about the Rhino Tracks and a lot of people ask about what the little screw is doing in there. If you take a look at it, you'll notice halfway around the tire from that screw, you'll find the valve stick. And on this unit, it's right down on the bottom. What that is, is these are foam filled. Whenever you see that screw in there, you know you got a foam filled tire. When they fill those tires, they inject it with two compounds that completely surround that. And that screw, there's a hole there to let the air out so the tire completely fills with foam. So it's a foam filled tire. This has six tires, six Rhino Trax tires on it. You can have the option to add an extra one on it, and we can also put uh, tandem axles on it. So if a guy would like tandem axles, you can have them in the center, you can also have them in the base. Wow, that's pretty neat. So it gives you a good ride. Um, <laughs> as far as the unit itself, when we talked about reduced maintenance and everything else, one of the unique features in our unit, number one, is every wheel assembly is has its own flotation device. You've got rubber donuts in the center, you got rubber donuts on the outside wheel, that is your pushing rough ground gives you a little smoother ride. If you notice, most cutters have a linkage that goes from the center axle to the wing to raise them up and down. On this unit we don't have them. and the reason we don't have them, we use a phasing cylinder setup. So the main cylinder raises the center and that leads off to the right wing, which raises the right wing. That leads off to the left wing, so when you hit the lever, it goes up and down, steady. It has little valves inside of those that keep them in phase, so the machines will always stay in phase, but it eliminates the linkage between the wings on it, the center and the wings, and the maintenance area gets rid of it. So it makes a bunch of work. So anyhow, in a nutshell, you got a transport lock on it to lock it up, and of course you can lock the wings up and so forth, but uh, that's, that's a basic rundown on the 4150. Uh, it's a 15 foot flat wide flex wing. And at the show this year, we have a brand new 10 foot uh, flex wing. So we now offer flex wings, Rhino Ag offers flex wings from 10 feet all the way up to 20 feet wide. Well, it's an impressive mower. I mean, it, it really, well thought out and looks like in at five inches of material that's uh, that's mowing down some that, small that's trees huge. That's huge. That's, uh, I'll tell you I've been in this business for 40 years I like selling things that are fun and Rhino products are definitely fun to sell well Barney thanks for the tour of the products and uh, we certainly appreciate it and we'll look forward to seeing them working out on how farms work okay and then right. one thing I'll add on this this one is available at 0% for 36 months as well sounds good always making a sale you bet thank you